Lord. Now let's talk about the show. How did you end up? Uh, because you know we were talking about. And I forgot the guy's name that does Future Weapons. Yeah, there Mac. Seems, there seems to be a a market on on the History Channel on on these more educational leaning channels to have charismatic military members come in and educate the public, people like me, on on weapons, on training, on you know to do sort of a a more than just high school documentary right, film on right. on what's going on with the military. How did you end up on this program? Well, I was, I actually I was telling Rizzuto, I long story short, I ended up I'm I'm a computer idiot. My wife is really good with cameras and computers. We made a homemade audition tape. I had gotten something from this agent said, "Hey, these guys are casting for this show. It's about warrior culture, blah blah blah. They gave certain things they wanted you to talk about on camera. I have I have this big broadsword I know how to fight with. I was out on this field up where I live." And I got the job from a homemade audition tape. Wow. Uh, yeah, it was, cool. it was a pretty cool story. It happens in radio. Happens all the time. Walking down the street and you get yeah. a job. Yeah. So it was, it was pretty funny how it all turned out. And, you know, and my show, uh, Warriors, is the weapons are cool. And that's very interesting stuff and the tactics. But I try to at least, and I hope uh, when I look back through the season, you can sort of see that, the, the, the continuity of it. There's just a common core of, in warrior culture. And it's not really about the violence. It's not about the killing. And that... Because that sucks, but the uh, the fact that you're actually willing to sacrifice for something more than yourself, and the fact that your your buddies are more important really than you are, and letting them down is like the ultimate uh, uh, a crime. So, and I and the same kind of guy who gets into a Viking boat, rows, goes on a raid, kills, brings treasure back, and rows all the way home. It's the same kind of guy who joins the Rangers or Special Forces. There's a certain kind of same kind of dude that does that, and. I wanted to get that across in Warriors. You know? If you're just joining us, talking to Terry Shepard, he's the host of Warriors on the History Channel. So, who is? Because <laughs> I, I know because, what you're going to ask. Because I was going to ask. They always you know, ask. Yeah, well, it, it is it is what the show is based mm-hmm. on. I mean, you know, you look at you know ninjas. Oh you know, yeah, this of is course. Like I can almost picture, and I'm not saying that you're like this, but <laughs> how, how many? Of, I, I, you know, I remember nights uh, having some nerdy friends at one point. You know, I remember one night in college. Uh, a couple of my friends spent all night over beers parsing up who would win a fight between Star Wars and Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, of you know, course. like you know, yeah. people were like, well, the Flash would take down the Green Lantern. Did it, did it start <laughs> like that, like an argument between comic book no, characters? It, like, well, a samurai <laughs> warrior would totally beat a Zulu. Well, there's a show on Spike called Toughest Warrior, Deadliest Warrior, I think it's called, and it's that's what they do, and they use graphics, and it's actually kind of a cool show, a different kind of thrust than mine. Um, yeah, it was. This wasn't so much about. It, are the samurai tougher than the Spartans? It was just a, a real, uh, let's get a real in-depth look about these guys, why they did what they did. And, you know, you can't separate people uh, from the time and place that they are. That's the only unrealistic thing about that show, uh, about pitting warriors. The because, Spike one, yeah. Yeah, because really, if you think about it, a samurai was the man in his time. If you brought him into a Spartan uh, in an arena with that, you, it's kind of hard to compare because you got different weapons, different training. So it always depends... At that place, at that time, who's the baddest dude? But I would have to say, if I had to pick one, like one guy who would probably be the scariest guy to fight, it might be the Spartans since, you know, and and not because of the 300 movie, but if you read about them, they literally, when they were born, they would be assessed by a group of elders, or elder men, soldiers. And as a baby, they would, if there was any deformity or any potential weakness, they would take that baby and leave him in a valley to die. Lovely. Yeah, so right off the bat, you're being tested. When when you look back on the history, it says you got Vikings, Spartans, Barbarians, yeah. Samurai, all, all this stuff. <clears throat> One thing that I, I always, and I, I had taken a self-defense class once a long time ago, and it was a, it was a handgun class. Right. And uh, the guy said, you know, the, he said distance equals life. He said, he said, he said, you know, the, the thing that people don't, realize when we talk about modern day weapons and this guy was real it was that the class was a little deaper than i was gonna say that's like, a, you know, a lot of theory you know, and technical I, stuff i there. was in college i thought i thought i would join the pistol club and you're I'm like, like dude right, show me how to shoot yeah, a gun yeah, 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 right, yeah something right. like that and he he was like well he's like you know back in the day with swords he's like you had to get right up on someone <laughs> yeah. you know when you look at the history of warriors prior to gunpowder are you because it's very different to you look at the M1, when, what, what was it that, that Patton said? The M1 Garand was the greatest battle yeah. implement ever. But and I got you, to shoot that sucker on the last episode. You were, you were firing at two, three hundred yards and sometimes. You know, World War I trench warfare. Was it re- when you studied this stuff, was it really, really different to think you got in and you jammed oh, yeah. it in someone's guts and twisted? I mean, I was watching Braveheart this right, morning before right. I came in. You know. Yeah. 
Well, they talk about in, in, in the Zulu episode too that there's a spear that a lot of Zulu words are based on the sounds they make. So, like a track, a tractor to those guys is a gunda gunda. They have a spear called the ikwa, which is the noise it makes when you pull it out of a dude's abdomen after yeah. you eviscerated him. And so, yeah, that that's that's what you see. You know, it, it does. You you get this 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 point of view where in your face combat is different. And even you know, every show, every episode, I got to spar with guys. But you know, hey, listen, you can't have two cats going at it full on with unpredictability with long swords because someone's going to lose a limb. You know, so we had to kind of work out a little bit how you do it, but. You know, and I've competed in, in martial arts stuff, and there's a big difference between seeing a guy two or three feet away and smelling his breath and feeling his energy as opposed to, you know, cracking him from 100 yards away. It doesn't make what we do now with guns any less, yeah, I guess, profound or or or. But you can important. separate yourself. But, but, you look at but the... you're not, you don't really see that guy's face a lot of times. I mean, when you got a guy and you're fighting a dude with a sword, you, you're yeah, looking you're right there. at him. Yeah, it, yeah, It's, you know, I was, you think about these in their digital scenes, but... You could picture, you know, the the Highlanders of Scotland. That's oh, a great and, movie. You, know, you take that and you <laughs> see like the the hacking of limbs and this yeah, and that. Yeah. And there's no battlefield medicine. There's mm-hmm. no mash units. There That's is, a death sentence. There's no Doctor Sanjay Gupta <laughs> jumping in. You know, because CNN's got the cameras on. Yeah. And and he got a lot of flack for that, but there there is none of that when you. I mean, that was pretty brutal stuff. I mean, you yes, think it was. after World War One. Trench warfare was really, really brutal yeah. stuff. I mean, they're, yeah, they're knifing each other right, right in the kidneys as they come across. So it's the violence aspect is definitely different when it's in your face. And, you know, and, and, and obviously, the, as we're able to reach out and kill each other from a further distance, it, it changes the way we look at it, maybe. You know, I, I, it must. It has to. Uh, and now we got predator drones. I mean, you yeah, got, you got kids I, who, are, who are fighting wars from Game Boy. You should see ca- those cats are using like joysticks. I'm like, wow, it's like it's like almost like PlayStation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I go uh, take out some. Go check out that. Yeah. But can I tell you, those those predators have been really really helpful to us because you know if we you just send a group of guys into a building is a dangerous uh, thing at, at, on the best of circumstances. So to have a, a predator drone like that. It, I gotta it, listen, say it's a good we're, thing. We gotta take a break. Yeah, yeah, it's man. a Friday if you want to stick around because we'd love to take calls. You know, I mean, yeah, man, of course. Right, so one eight six six. I'm on the Wilk House show. This can't be cooler. One eight six six ninety five Patriot. We're being joined in studio by Terry Shepard from the History Channel's Warriors, and uh, maybe we'll get some finer points of. You know, you said you said the Spartan, but what was the most what was the most fun for you? What was the one like if you had to dress up for Halloween? Like which <laughs> which which would it be? It would have been the Zulus, probably. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> I went I went in sixth grade. I went through a ninja phase. Everybody did. Lee Van Cleef had that TV oh, show, dude. American Throwing ninja. Stars in Your oh, Backyard. Yeah. Please. I would order them out of the back of magazines. Yeah, of course, yeah. My I mom had... would freak out. What are you doing? Yeah. Them throwing just, stars yeah. at trees. We used to throw them at each other, which was wow. really foolish. That's the difference between your childhood and mine. One eight six six ninety five Patriot. One eight six six ninety five Patriot. We'll take calls with Terry Shepard from History Channel's Warriors. This is the Will Cow Majority. We are right. They are wrong. That's the end of the story. XM America Right 166 Series Patriot 144. Mark Levin, 6 p.m. East, 3 West. Every nation that goes down the road of socialized medicine regrets it. The problem is it's difficult to reverse course. Socialized medicine is a disaster. But don't worry, everybody in Britain has health care. Doesn't mean they get good care, but they have health care. Now more than ever, Serious Patriot 144. Attention business owners, is your website capturing or losing visitors? What do they do when they get there? Most website visitors only look at one page of your website and then leave in under one minute, never taking any action. That's called your bounce rate. Ever heard of that? There are 11 essential questions you should be able to answer to run a killer website that maximizes the massive opportunities happening on the web today. And I would be shocked if you could answer more than three of these questions. Any business owner who leaves the strategy of their website up to others who are quote-unquote more technical is making a critical mistake. Today, your website walks hand-in-hand with your overall business strategy. We've made it easy for you to know the 11 essential insights to maximizing the web today. I'm Chet Holmes, author of the number one business book, The Ultimate Sales Machine. If you Google my name, you'll find me in thousands of places on the web creating massive traffic. We also have websites that get 84% of all visitors to take action. That's outstanding. Call and leave us a voicemail with your email address and we'll email you this outstanding CEO education. Call 800-659-0300. Call right now, 800-659-0300. Your 401k is in danger. Your IRA is in trouble. The U.S. paper dollar is unstable. As you hear me talk, you're losing net worth fast. To make matters worse, huge government spending is devaluing your money even faster. High rates of inflation are rolling toward you like a tidal wave of loss. Don't just sit there. Protect your portfolio and your family. Buy gold now, direct and wholesale with United Gold Group. 
have tripled since 2001, and many experts predict the prices will climb another 100%. The demand is strong, and the timing may never be better. When you buy from us, you're buying direct and getting wholesale prices. Call us and learn what other gold companies don't want you to know. United Gold's 2009 Investors Kit will supply you with everything you need to know about the advantages of buying gold direct, cutting out the middleman. Your Gold Investors Kit is yours absolutely free if you call now. 800-601-GOLD. Supplies are limited, so call right away. You'll also get the secrets on how to own gold in your retirement account. Call now. 800-601-GOLD. 800-601-GOLD. That's 800-601-4653. It's a fact. More than 13 million kids can't afford basic school supplies. Make a difference and join the Do Something 101 campaign. Together with your kids, collect new binders, pens, notebooks, anything that students will need for back to school this fall. From July 5th to September 19th, bring the supplies to any staple store nationwide or donate $1 at the register, and they'll get them to students who need them most right in your neighborhood. Get all the info at DoSomething101.org. Great Americans like Bill Bennett, Mike Church, Andrew Wilkow, Sean Hannity, and me, Mark Levin, now more than ever, fighting for our American values on Sirius Patriot 144. Call him right-wing wacko. Hey, you nowhere. Andrew Wilkow. All right, we're having fun on a Friday. We're joined in studio by Terry Shepard. He's the host of History Channel's Warriors. And uh, we were just having fun talking off the air uh, about your experiences. We'll get to the calls in just a second. Yeah. I want to bring this on the air. You actually met the, we're talking about the movie The Great Raid, right? Right. Well, yeah. I, I, the final episode that we did, uh, it was titled Special Forces. It wasn't about actually Green Braids, but it's about a, a forerunner of us, uh, the Alamo Scouts in the Pacific in World War II. And they were like small recon teams that went behind enemy lines, and they worked with Filipino guys. So they had a that was a great little... movie. Yeah. Well, this this uh, I got to meet on the final episode. And it was a surprise. The production company didn't know that they I, they flew this guy in from L.A. to Florida, and his name's Bill Littlefield, and he is a bona fide war hero, as humble as they come. Which most of the all those most guys, of them all, are. No, they all are. All the good ones are. And I, you know, he pulls up in this old Willie's Jeep and, and uh, the, my buddy Lance says, hey, look who I got. I got Bill Littlefield. I, start, I started crying. I, I, this is like, you know, it's like, uh, it's like someone in New York City meeting P. Diddy or something. I mean, that's a huge thing for me. It's, this is my hero. And so it was a great, oh, man, he and I just started talking and he broke out pictures. And I was like, do you know what an example you've been to guys like me? You're a hero. And he, and he looked at me and he said, and it's on film. He said, well, you know what, Terry? He goes, guys like you that are doing what you do today. You're our heroes. And I thought, ah, oh, man, 